Hello and welcome to 2024. I hope you don't see the mess in the back, but you will see it in the front too. So welcome to the new year. It's probably going to be very similar to the old one. And you know, that's it. Set your expectations low. <laughs> I am the official 2024 greeting person. Today we have a kind of a slow video. I did a lot of work yesterday. I spent like the entire day yesterday working with my propagations that you have seen in my previous video, which if you haven't seen, you can watch right here somewhere. That video has been extremely popular. I think it is my most popular video to date which is insane because I thought it wasn't that good, but here we are. I think my last two videos, which were the most spontaneous videos ever, I think I did like very little planning for them. They were the most popular videos that I ever made, which means that I pretty much suck <laughs> at making YouTube content because whatever I plan doesn't turn out to be that popular, but when I don't plan, or maybe it means that I'm like a genius, hidden genius or something like that. I want to make some January plans. These are not New Year resolutions. We're not doing that, but I do have a lot of work that needs to get done pretty quickly because I'm getting slightly frustrated with, you know, the prop boxes here. I have some Hoyas here in various states. A lot of them not great. A lot of them not great because they have been, I have some Hoyas that have been in the bags for way too long. We're going to take a look at those and I have some Hoyas that suffered in Pawn. That's going to be a separate video where I'm going to take care of those, but for now they are all sitting here kind of separated from everyone else and I need to tackle them. I really am getting irritated by the lack of space and jumping over plants. I have my computer here and I think I'm just gonna slowly go through the month. I don't really plan out the entire month usually. I usually plan out the week, but because there are plenty of chores and I sort of have a clear picture of what I want my month to be, I think we're just gonna spend some time planning that out. And can we like get a sexy shot of this? <laughs> can we get a sexy shot of this of me planning like just deep in thought? I don't know how other people record videos they look really genuine to me whenever I try to make, like, when I try to romanticize, because people are all into romanticizing their videos and b-rolls and whatnot, it just doesn't look genuine. <laughs> but anyways, before we continue with that, I do have a couple of hoys that I wanted to show you. If you follow me on Instagram, which you shouldn't, I'm terrible at Instagram, I showed this plant, it's Hoya Panderata from Vietnam. It is the best clone of Hoya Panderata. It has beautiful splashy leaves. Absolutely amazing. Looks so sexy and she is in bloom. She blooms so frequently and without fail, but look at this branch. Look at it. Can you, can you see that? It's freaking amazing. Why are we growing Hoya Finlaysoni? Come on, guys. These bushy Hoyas look really good on a grow wall, which we're gonna actually fix in this month. And I do have this one in bloom, which you kind of saw in my previous video, but kind of not. This is from my friend Alex when I went to Switzerland. Um, this is Hoya Occultata. It's a cutting from his plant. He did not bloom it. I bloomed it before him and he has had it for longer than me. Ha ha ha, I'm so good. I'm better than everyone else. <laughs> it's actually just in moss and it's loving the life in just moss. So I don't know if I'm going to leave it just in moss. The roots are actually looking pretty good. I do have a cappuccino here that I will... Do you say cappuccino? How do you say cappuccino? Portuguese, it's... Cappuccino. Cappuccino, okay. Cappuccino. Basically Portuguese. It's basically hot chocolate if you ask me. So anyways, honestly, sexy shot. Can we get a sexy shot of me planning? Come on, Miro. Give it effort. I can't. <laughs> I have decided this is sexy enough. <laughs> Shut up. Don't judge me. <laughs> How does the calendar app work? I have kind of wrote down what I need to do in January. I have tried last month to make it a goal for myself to do eight videos. Let's be real. I'm not going to be do eight, doing eight videos in January. Maybe in February, maybe we can record, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get 
all those videos out. I also wrote down the topics for this month that we will be discussing. Finally, I have to get the Hoya tour out. I have to finish with that. I will, I think, in this month finally tackle my grow wall. And then with chores, I have to repot several anthuriums that I have. My philodendrons, I have hoisabona that needs to be repotted, and my hanging yope. I do want to do that in Tortum, and they really need to be uh, taken care of. I have a Hoya sale. Unfortunately, a lot of people do ask me on Instagram, and I cannot send outside of Serbia. I will have sale in the country, so people who are watching, there will be cuttings. There are currently around 70 something, so I need to start taking photos, because a lot of those are rooted and are ready to go. Unfortunately, the temperatures are not there, there yet, so I will have to wait but I can at least start taking photos. In the cabinets, so what I want to do is I want to restart all the plants except one in this part. We have Hoya Apoda, Hoya Exilis. I'm not restarting Hoya Exilis, that's the only one. Ivor Sherry Apoda I'm restarting and Valiki Subspecies Tenebrosa. All of those are getting restarted. And Evelina, I have that one that I'm going to actually tackle in this video. It keeps getting dried out. It's not working for me the way the current setup of that plant. I think I'm gonna move all of those out because my Hoya Exilis, and just in general, those hoas grow so fast and they frequently get caught up in the upper parts of the cabinet and I have to uh, tear the wines out. They need more space. So I think I'm gonna put those in the tent and some from the tent that are that I have just restarted I think I'm gonna put there. I'm going to try to not put everything in self-watering pots, not because I don't like them, it's they take up more space, obviously. So I'm going to somehow try to limit my Hoyas, first of all, by not growing them in pond because they grow really, really large, excessive roots, if you ask me, in pond. So I'm going to put them in regular potting mixes and grow them in small cups, and hopefully that will help. So I need to also sort out the lights. These lower levels don't have that much light. It's only eight watt lamps, so I have two actually above and one is turned off to 16 watts. So I'm gonna try to move one lower and have like a highlight level on the bottom and I'm gonna put some lacunosas there, like variegated lacunosas, etc. We're not gonna do that today, but maybe in this video. I have to repot hoyas that are outside of the cabinet as well, so that needs to get done. And just to restart hoyas, some hoyas in the hallway, and I need to repot plants in the top, uh, top of my growth tent, the, the horizontal one, the crazy one. <laughs> and of course, on top of that, four videos plus some Patreon content, which I'm getting slightly better at, but still not very good at. So I need to do all of that this month. It sounds like it will be enough. There will be more chores added to this, don't you worry. I think I can decide what which of these I'm feeling <laughs> brave enough to do. And I don't feel super brave today. I have some plants here in the baggies and I need to take care of those. I also have plants in a pro box there that need to be repotted slash done with something in here. Some of those look good. These mostly look terrible so you will judge me and I don't care. Let's let's deal with the smaller stuff today. <laughs> I don't think these are terribly bad. We have a regular Crossy Petiolata here and this I got as a gift months ago and I still have not taken care of it. This plant has been sitting in the bag for such a long time. And then I got also these, also Crossy Petiolata. So we're gonna root these and put them in a prop box. This is a Carnosa that I did chop up into several parts. It was supposed to be very splashy. It's from my friend Farah, but it did lose the splash. It was supposed to be all like that. So I'm trying to return the splash, but also I think I'm gonna pot all of these together. <gasps> no. No, it cannot be! I found one single Mealybug on that Carnosa. I have not seen mealybugs in such a long time. Let me just check the plants now because that Carnosa did not have mealybugs. Oh, I'm so angry. I, I have not had mealybugs in several years and I certainly do not want to see them again. So this means these will stay in a separate pro box 
for eternity because I will not be dealing with mealybug infestation, let me tell you. Mealybugs are very difficult to get rid of. If you write to me that they're easy to get rid of, they are not. Oh, these are breaking off some of the leaves. And there's just no solution. Alcohol, like sure it works, but it's so much work and they come back. I do have a couple of uh, recipes that I can try out, but I just do not want to see mealybugs. I will not be having that. That carnosa has been in my collection for such a long time, so I'm sure that it jumped from some other plant, but which one? Because, you know, if you see one mealybug, you know that's not the end. All right, I did find the culprit. Okay, it is this Hoya Bella. So that's going into trash. I'm not treating that. That is the culprit, which means I have to think really hard about plants that have been with that Hoya Bella, because there have been a couple of them in the same prop box. So hopefully no one laid any eggs. <laughs> I am messing around with the mealybugs when I tell you I'm not joking. We don't have predatory insects in Serbia. You have to use insecticides and there are none that work effectively in mealybugs anymore. All of them have been forbidden actually. <laughs> I do have one Hoya lacunosa. I think this might be Hoya lacunosa punsak. It has rotted all the way to the node, but I have managed to kind of save it. I am gonna keep trying. This splashy Mathilde, which has rotted completely in pawn. And I just put it in the bag with some moss and we are getting someplace with it, it seems. I cut it in two. So we're gonna have this as cutting number one. And then one node, one leaf that I'm gonna grow out for myself is cutting number two. So I'm gonna put them together. We have my Waliniana. This plant has suffered in pawn. It was a beautiful plant once, and then it has suffered being propagated in water with not much care, to be quite honest with you. And I'm just now checking to see how much of it has rooted. And it seems to me that we do have decently rooted cuttings here. Not all look super pretty. Slight rot on some of these roots already because they have been in water and they have dried out. Not ideal. See, that's why I don't like to propagate in water. It dries out and I honestly forget about it. The best thing that I can do for this plant is root it again. Yeah, these roots are not good. I can fool myself here. Like these are, there's just no point. Unfortunately, I will have to cut these up a bit there's just no point in me pretending that some of these water roots are good because, you know, eventually it's gonna come back and bite me in the ass. So I will pod them and put them in a propagation box because that is the method that works for me. Because in the propagation box, I can leave them for some time and not worry about them. It just doesn't work for me to propagate in water. I mean, it works. If I had less plants, it would work. I'm not saying it's a bad method. It's a great method to propagate your plants. It's just for my lifestyle, it doesn't work. And then we have two more Carnosa clones, which also have been in water for a long time. I will put the names on the screen. Both have rooted, but I do need to rewatch my video and see exactly what they are. So <laughs> I will put the tags on there. We do have more Hoyas, but I think this is like a good amount of plants for today. It will give us a couple of hours of work, I think, and then um, probably tomorrow we'll take care of the rest. I proceeded to pot the cuttings that you have just seen, and I did talk in this part of the video about the topics that I actually wanted to discuss, but Honestly, my thoughts were not that great, the takes were not that great, so I decided to re-record this, and you will see it later in the video, but, you know, I was all over the place, my thoughts were all over the place, I have just discovered mealybugs on my plants, and honestly, I have not seen them in years, and Miro, from this moment in the video, does not know that he will discover even more mealybugs again. 
really not the most ideal situation, but all of these cuttings that you see actually ended up, or actually most of them, not the carnosas because they did have okay roots, but the rest of the cuttings did end up in a propagation box and I will just root them. Honestly, this is my preferred method to pot them in whatever I intend to grow them in, put them in a prop box and, and then in two or three weeks, depending on the season, they will develop the roots and then I can take them out. So I really don't love to water propagate anymore. I think it takes up a lot of space. I cannot cover the water easily. And more importantly, more often than not, I completely forget that I am water propagating and then they dry out and it takes so much longer than this method. Oh, a new massage. Let's see, who's texting me? Duolingo. Urgent, protect your data. We detected that your password has been exposed in a what? In a data breach in another platform will... <sighs> Are you joking? Have I been pawned? Have I been? No, please don't. Okay, it has been pawned. Okay, well, I will have to change my password after the video. Can we just stop? Hackers, dear hackers, the world is not in a great place, okay? Stop hacking. I cannot deal with that. The last thing that I need to deal with is hacking, okay? Can we stop it? Like, where do you find the strength to hack? <laughs> I completely forgot about the computer viruses until last night I was listening to Trixie and Katya's podcast. They started to talk about, like, computer viruses, and I was like, Wow, those were a thing. I was like actually concerned about computer viruses at one point in my life. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Anyways, to move on from computer viruses, pawn passwords and credit card fraud or whatever, let's just start with the plant chores that we have. I don't think I will be cutting anything, so we don't need the scissors. I will play with them until I cut myself though. So what we will do, we will take care of some plants. You, you can see I have some propagation boxes. They are actually not used for propagations, but to separate the plants that I want to work on, this is kind of what I do. If I notice the Hoa is not doing well, I put them in those boxes to isolate. It's kind of like to not look at them in my collection. So that's like their detention. So this is supposed to be sort of like a reset month, season. I'm not quite sure, reset year perhaps. And I wanted to touch on topic on how to find love for your plants. Again, the plants that you already have because I have certainly fallen out of love and back in love with some species that I have in my collection. And I will just share some tips that I did if there is a plant that you don't particularly like, maybe what you can do to like it again. And if it doesn't work, you know, no harm done, you tried your best. I have here, first of all, it's very short-lived, the flowers on Hoyas partioides but it blooms frequently. And if you remember, this one did rot before. Can we, I don't even see this. Like I literally cannot see what I'm, I'm I see the pot. This is how tiny the camera monitors are. It's so far away from me. I only see the pot, I don't see the plant. Um, I mean, I see the plant. I don't see it at a monitor. Very cute Hoyas partioides. And it did rot for me in pawn and I rooted it again in pond because they learned nothing. And I will try to repot this today. It has grown. It's kind of odd with Hoyas partioides. You think it's not growing, but it is. And I can see that it's going down now for some reason. I don't actually know how well you will see that, but see here, it was going like this and then now it's going down. Very interesting. I do think I would be more confident now about propagating this one because we basically rotted it and rooted it again, um, but I'm not going to chop it. Uh, I could, but I'm not going to. She is safe with me. I honestly don't think it's worth it to cut it. I saw some people sell plant this planter cuttings with a couple of nodes or one, two nodes, or not one, two nodes, I'm sorry, with one, two peduncles. These are all peduncles. I would never do that. 
um, I think I would cut it in half and then we can talk about something. I think like, even if you're buying Hoya Spartiotis, don't buy it with one, two peduncles. It's just way too risky. I would buy it with at least five or six. That being said, we're gonna try to repot her today. We do have some plans here. I'm actually going to stop telling you what I'm going to do and just start doing it. I do have a couple of more tasks in my video that I recorded a couple of days ago. I discovered mealybugs on the one cutting of Hoya Bella that I was gifted and I need to check the cuttings that I had in the same box. It was right here. I'm not entirely sure what was in that box. I do have a vague idea, but I will just go through all of the cuttings that I recently dealt with just to make sure no one has mealybugs. It was very few, only like maybe four or five that I saw on two or three plants, but I will inspect the cuttings. I have a lot. I have, I think 70 or 80 cuttings for sale and those are not affected, but I just want to make sure to inspect everything. And I do have a couple of problems with some plants here, which we will talk about. So let's just begin. I feel it's time to begin. So I think I'm going to start with something that looks okay-ish, but it's been annoying the living heck out of me. And it is this Hoya Svetlana. No, this is, are you Svetlana? Yes, you are Svetlana. She is Svetlana. I heard something in the back. So Hoya Svetlana, hmm, Hoya Svetlana, okay. It's a cross with Deikie and Finlaysoni. It is a plant that looks nice, ish. It arrived with one leaf. It grew since this. It is a year old. <laughs> we have tried very hard, haven't we? It is a year old and it's a terribly painfully slow grower. It is in a self-watering pot and I suspect that there is some amount of root rot. This mix that it's in, it's not pure cocoa husk. Actually, I think this is like cocoa peat and some bark and some perlite. I see that this mix is very wet towards the top, even though this is empty. I do see some roots on the bottom coming out. I just wanna take it out assess the roots and potentially put it in a plastic see-through cup. And this is not only my experience, a lot of people do say that Hoa Svetlana is painfully slow and Hoa Deke is generally known as a <laughs> B word, C word, A word. Yeah, they're all, all you know. Um, <clears throat> so let's just start with Hoya Svetlana here. Did I show you? I don't even know what you can see here. Let's be gentle. Ugh. Oh, that looks very compacted here. Okay. On a scale of one to 10, the roots are a zero. They're not completely rotten, but I can tell you they're not not rotten. Actually, this plant, it seems, didn't really have a lot of roots to begin with anyways. So it's safe to say that she did not love the self-watering setup. We are going to fix this. She will go into a cup, a small cup. I think I was just very optimistic that she will grow because that has been my experience with a lot of these and you don't really know until you try it. With a lot of the Hoyas, I put them in a very small cup or in a very, very small pot that is like something like this with purple pride or maybe not purple pride and they grow out of it in, you know, two months. And then sometimes they put something in a pot that is this size and it loves it and it grows really fast and sometimes they don't. I try to reduce the amount of times now where I repot these plants and not size up constantly. Oh gosh. Oh, we, we really don't look good. You don't look good. Okay, so I think we, 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 we will lose quite a bit of the roots here. So much that we're not gonna need the scissors, right? That's fine. It's important to notice on time, which this certainly wasn't on time. On the bright side, we have a new pot to use. Yay. I'm actually not upset. I honestly, with this plant, I'm at a point where I kind of don't care if she makes it. I would love for it, her to make it and get maybe more leaves that are like this, that are big, not this, this is trash. Why is it so small? 
I have cleaned up the roots. I'm not going to go too hard on cleaning up the roots. I'm going to leave these. These seem, when I pull on them, they don't separate. However, if I keep pulling on the mix, I will keep breaking them, which I have done with a couple of them. I am going to remove some of these on the bottom because they are rotten. Honestly, the stem too. Yeah, the stem is also not in the greatest of shapes. Hmm. Okay, you know what? I have changed my mind because I don't see any sap. And let me just show you something. I have seen this in some of these Hoyas that make a woody stem. You can kind of see that this is dry and you can peel it off. I don't know if you can see that. So even though these roots don't look terrible, I do think we need to get to some fresher stem here. So I'm going to actually cut it. See, now you can see some sap. But still, I'm going to cut a little bit more. It's going to be very risky. And because of that, I'm going to take out this scalpel just to get as close to that node as possible to just remove this stem with and keep the leaf. You don't have to do this with a scalpel, by the way. Preferably don't, because I will cut myself. Let me just try to lay it flat on something that I don't have. I <laughs> will lay it flat on this. Okay, so we are operating here. Okay, so this is super risky. However, I think in a decent mix, we can make something out of this. This is not how I would cut a Hoya, but I just want to get this stem that has rotten a bit out of the, a, a bit, a bit, not a lot. <laughs> okay, so it has happened to me before, especially with Callistophila, with one of the Callistophilas, with one of my first Callistophila that the plant, I can't explain it. The roots were fine, but inside the stem, it was like dust. Honestly, I do suspect mites a bit for this. I don't, I think part of this might be root rot with some of the lower roots, but honestly, not that many. These were all in good shape. And like when you see the amounts of roots that I'm gonna try to show you with my phone, you can see some of the roots here, but it's not that significant of a loss, honestly, because these were all good. But again, with that stem, the stem was just so dry. For, for some reason, and I'm not quite sure what that is. And then when you, when you rub it, it starts to fall apart, um, similarly to like wood dust, when you have wood dust. I have experienced that on some of the Hoyas that are kind of like from the Finlay Sony section, and you know, Callistophila falls into that. I do believe maybe we are having some mites here as well. Anyways, this is all a theory. Don't repeat this anywhere. If I see this on Facebook, I will hunt you down. <laughs> Don't <laughs> repeat it anywhere. So we're, this is obviously started with a great example. We're going to let Hoya Svetlana dry there a little bit. We have another frustrating plant. I have talked about this plant before. She is frustrating. Today I will I actually don't even know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> the plant that I'm talking about is Hoya Rinci from Borneo, otherwise known as just a absolute frustrating piece of work that I barely saved and it has not been grateful for my effort. And we have the base here. This plant was growing really well for me in Lekka. It was really beautiful. It had a bunch of leaves and then out of nowhere, for no reason, it started to drop the leaves. And I'm just going to cut off this vine because it died back here, there's no nodes. So let's just take out the base and check on the roots. They're looking okay. A little bit dry, actually. Actually, I do see a little bit dryness. But anyways, this plant started to drop the leaves. It was the mysterious leaf drop. We do have actually um, some roots separating, so I don't know why are you annoying me? <sighs> anyways, I guess it's good I'm doing this, right? 
yeah, it's, it's really bone dry in some places. So this plant, I also think, does prefer a little bit more water. But back to the leaf drop, I just could never figure out why that happened. I honestly think this is not a plant that is easy for many people. I think a lot of people have fr frustration with it. It is actually possible now that I look at it because there is no really good reason why these roots should be in this state. I think it just might have really sensitive root system and that might be the case. Like I definitely see roots here that are in good shape. I'm surprised to see any that are not in a good shape because again, I have not been overwatering and I surely have not been underwatering that much. But here we are. And there are some Hoyas that do really have sensitive roots. Hoya undulata is one of them really sensitive roots on that one. So it's actually possible that why the leaf drop happened in Lekka is because at one point the roots did get damaged. I talked before how sometimes, you know, what happens in Lekka, if you let it dry out too much, you will suffer a large lo loss of roots. So this is one of the plants, of the two plants. The second one is actually a cutting from the base. Has it done well? Absolutely not. But I do see a couple of grow points, so I'm actually not going to chop the vine here. What I wanted to do is combine them in organic mix because I did see some root suffrage in pond here. It's honestly such a shame because this plant was beautiful. It was my pride. No longer the case. I do see some okay roots. I see some not so much okay roots here. I will try to transition them to a bark with some moss and some pumice. And we'll see how that goes. Is this a good move? No, this is not a good move. It's never a good move to mess with a Hoya that you know has sensitive roots. Absolutely not a good move. But here we are doing it. Why? Because someone has to make the bad choices. I would actually stay away from this plant if you are a beginner or if you don't have a lot of patience. It's not cheap. You know, this plant has been in the trade for a long time. It's still not cheap. Not in my opinion, at least. And this is the clone from Borneo. There are other clones of Hoya Rinci that I do believe behave a little bit better. Actually, if I kind of do this, I can potentially even hide the mess that this plant is. Let me just try to do that. Let's just talk a little bit about the plants for 2024. When it comes to my plant collection, I mentioned before that I'm downsizing and that I would like to do more intentional plant collecting. And in the past couple of days, I have been thinking about this and I think this year what we need to do is really try to limit myself this year, which instantly not loving because I have never really limited myself. I really think I need to select 20 species that are really unique. The issue with my wish list that I didn't tell you about is that in that list, I have some Hoyas that I would like to grow to compare them. Some Hoyas that are very similar to Hoya Lis, Pecatissima, etc. And I'm not really sure how to work this in because I think that has sort of kind of become my goal here for learning about the Hoya. But I think maybe that's because, you know, we expect to live a long life. <laughs> So maybe not this year, we don't get to compare those, maybe next year. I would like this year to kind of bring the story of Carnosa to a place where I kind of better understand what cultivars are out there, how many clones, etc. And Hoyas from the Lanceolata section. So Hoya Bella, Hoya Lanceolata, Linearis is in that section, Chinghugensis, Vaccinioides, Sangleriana and so on, to bring those two stories to kind of, not a closure, we, there will be more information, but for myself, to kind of understand them, to see them, to grow them. And then we move on to something else next year, perhaps. So that's about that part. Let's pot this up. I will use a mix that I used for my orchids. It's bark, a bit of moss, and I will add pumice this time. I have not in the past, but I will add it this time. So we will use pumice. This is from Equagenera, not sponsored. And then size two bark, orchid bark plus two, and orchid bark plus one. Plus two is larger, plus one is smaller, and then 
or kimas. There is no accurate measurement here. I essentially take two hands of both barks and I already need to order more of this. This is supposed to be a very long lasting bark as well. I think this bark might be slightly hydrophobic, but that's what makes it last longer. So it shouldn't break down. And then some pumice. We mix that in. Pumice is supposed to help with moisture retention and so is moss. With moss, I will just sprinkle a little bit through, maybe like a handful, maybe less. And this is for Hoyas, I think, you know, that are prone to rot, for Hoyas with more sensitive roots. I think some are even more sensitive like Sulaviziana. I think you could completely avoid the moss there, but we're not going to for this one. So approximately what that looks like, you can see it's very airy. Let's just get that in there. How are we going to do this? I think this one doesn't make an exceptional amount of roots. Oh my gosh, I... Oh. That pillow made me think there was a person behind me. Okay, let's just keep doing this. Let's focus. And I think the next one can be Spartioides. Those are my plants when it comes to plants in this year. Is this too big? No, it's not. And I have to tell you, I have been loving these pots because these trellises, which have been very unstable for me in the past, these hoops that I make, they're just now very stable in these pots because you can really put them inside very deep. So I don't know, they've been just very stable and I've been very happy with that. And then we're just going to wrap this around in the most ugly way that we can, right? See, that's not looking so bad. And then what I do is I have this one with the holes. I put it in one without holes and then I put it in a terracotta pot that I have. Okay, Spartioides. I don't expect great roots. And I'm not going to try very hard to remove the pumice here. I see, so not entirely recovered. I see that she is recovering. Okay, honestly, this might be too big. I have smaller ones. I have not planned to use this small one, but I think it's going to be more than enough for this Spartioides. Yeah. The way I like to do this is put some moss on the bottom so it can wick. And maybe I pot this a little bit deeper than it was so we can just get more roots on this stem here. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to make a bit more mix. I'm actually pretty sure you can buy a mix that is almost exactly like this. I'm just trying to separate the strands a little bit so we don't have like a big clump of moss. And this is not a homogenous mix either. All right, we have here, oof, oof, oof. Okay, it's time to move to some ugly Hoyas. I also want to say, I think it is a good thing to limit ourselves in this market. This year, it's going to be really tempting to get back into the plant craze, I think. Not for all of us, maybe. Not for uh, some of us who have been around for longer. I think for new people going in, it will be very tempting because there will be so many plants offered for a cheap or for a low price, which is a great thing. But I think it can really lead to over buying the plants, which again, it's completely fine if you do it. You will have to probably downsize at one point. I think for a lot of us who have been around for a long time, probably we're not going to go into that. I think for us, like the lowering of the prices and so many plants becoming available, it's kind of like, oh, they're not so special anymore. What is moving again? Something is moving here amongst my plants. And I'm like slightly terrified that it's some sort of a bug that is going to attack me while I sleep. Please do not. So this is a Hoya Caudata that needs to be put in something that's not this. This one has gone through a lot of wet and dry cycles, but I'm actually looking at something, whether this is mold. Okay, we're gonna trim some of these roots off. It's unfortunate, but it does explain why this hasn't grown. I didn't really take care of this caudata the best 
could have grown to a much nicer plant. I do think this will go in a bag, in a very small pot, so this one, and then in a bag. And we'll see how she does. So this is Kodata IML1556. That is supposed to be a much bigger plant, which is kind of true for the next one. I'm actually going to restart this one. This is Hoya Evelinae. Doesn't look great. And let's just restart this. We have a lot of dead roots here, which is to be completely expected. I will trim all of them off. We did manage to hydrate the, pl the plant to some extent, but she has not, she, has, she was supposed to be repotted ages ago. This plant could have bloomed by now. It could have done much better than she's doing. Completely my fault. I take all the responsibility. You know, this is not ideal, but I'm going to cut her into several cuttings that are not going to be very pretty. They will go in a propagation box and hopefully hydrate. And I think to root this one, we're not gonna go with this mix. It's not going to be great. This Hoya is something that does want more water. So I think I will root her in moss for the starters. And then I will think about the mix, but I think it will be very good to hydrate her now in moss. I just need to see how I will pot these if they can fit all in the same pot, which kind of would be ideal. Yeah, I think, I think we can put them all in the same pot. And I'm not particularly concerned about rooting in moss. I have rooted many hoyas in moss with a lot of success. I can't find moss now. The key is not to compact the moss too much. And maybe I will actually go with slightly larger. So I don't have to actually worry about compa compacting this too much. And then she will go in one of my propagation boxes. Thankfully, I have, I have freed up some space in them. It's a beautiful plant when it's not dehydrated. I do actually have Hoya Apoda, which I will restart. I have also under, it's so easy to underwater these Hoyas. They really are humidity loving Hoyas and they should not have been growing in my cabinet because that's not really the high humidity place. They should not have been growing in pond either. I know some people grow them successfully in pond and I wouldn't say that I'm super unsuccessful with them. I have bloomed my apoda, but it just doesn't look pretty. And I have the bear vine syndrome, which is a syndrome that I have, you know, <laughs> self-diagnosed. Um, I just don't like when they have a lot of bear vines and that's definitely the case for my apoda. I will only spray this very lightly because the moss is slightly damp. We don't want the moss to be too wet. The rest of these plants I will shower to really soak the bark, but this I'm not. We have my Hoya Klopin Borghi. I have been sick as I have complained many times and I'm just going to take a cutting of this one. It's in the worst shape ever. Um, I'm not going to even try to save these vines. I'm going to save this one here. So I'm only saving one cutting. The rest of the plant is looking terrible. I don't, I might try to save the base. Just really cut back on these. This is just, there's no sap either. So we know that's trash. There is some sap actually here, but it's not looking great. I mean, this is not recovering. The reason this looks so bad, it didn't look so bad, is um, I left it on top of my fridge. I left it on top of my fridge. It was supposed to be one of those situations. I don't have time to deal with this now. It was supposed to be repotted because this is a mix that's not suitable for this plant. And it never was repotted. I left it there. I got sidetracked with other chores. I got sick then and it was for a month in a dark spot. And it went from, you know, my Hoya Grow wall where there was a lot of light and then it went to terrible conditions and now it's looking awful. And actually my elliptica was with this one too and that one completely didn't make it. Unfortunate, but here we are. At least we have a cutting, so we will actually keep this. This, however, has rehydrated, it seems, a bit, not a lot. But I'm going to pot this in one of these 
um, cups and root it in a prop box. We have to wait for this to stop bleeding. I think I will stop recording now because this needs to dry. I will shower these and then probably come back later today slash tomorrow to check the Hoyas for the mealybugs in the tent. So that's it for now. I have moss everywhere. Lovely. Love it when it gets so sticky with the Hoya sap. All right, I'm not entirely sure where to put you while we do this. So these are the tents, as you know, and the light is currently off, but I do have some propagations in there for sale in both of the tents. They're quite filled up, but also they are cleaned up, out. They're clean, they look very nice. Well, not this one, <laughs> but I just wanna check the propagation, see how they are doing, potentially even take photos. And I just wanna take a look at them to see if I will find a mealybug or two, hopefully not, but I am concerned because I think two or three of those cuttings were in the same box where I did find a couple of mealybugs in a Hoya Bella that I threw away. Or actually, maybe they weren't. See, that's the issue. I can't remember. The box was here, but now I remember that actually these were in another box. Okay, so we can't remember, so we need to carefully inspect every single one of them make sure that everyone is clean, etc., which I will check also before sending anyways. And the sending is not gonna incur in several weeks, potentially a month, because it's getting cold here. I'm just going to open the tent and start looking. Hello, darkness. You do not see anything. I'm not going to turn on the light. Maybe I can turn on the light. I need to climb the tent. Maybe I can actually show you what the tent looks like now. I'm just going to do like a quick pan. You will see that I did kick out one of the shelves so I can put bigger Hoyas down here. The shelf wasn't that useful. Like we did have Hoyas on top, but on the bottom we didn't have any light. Those were, that level was for low light Hoyas. So I just put them here. They're quite big as you can see. And then we have this section here. There's still some space for smaller ones, but that is what it's looking like right now. And we're trying to grow some hanging here that will change. So hopefully that is not too shaky. These are the propagations that I'm talking about. That is some of them. And then in the other tent, I do believe this one has a slightly cleaner look maybe. All those in the back are for sale. The ones in the closed boxes have not rooted yet. These have been rooted in the bags and these three tiers, these are staying with me. Something will go here. Undulatas, we have to get to those eventually, but yeah. So we need to take care of this tent eventually as well. The best way to do this is for us to get on the floor. I just need to make sure that I do get a unbelievably sexy angle for this and Let's start with these. I have actually labeled them as well, which is not something that I do so early on. <laughs> I usually wait a bit longer. You can see these that I've cut in my previous video. This is one of the Tangamus. So nicely rooted. I mean, nicely. It's been rooting for like a week and a half. <laughs> so it's quite fast. The rooting happens quite quickly in Coco Husk. And I just don't like to keep them in propagation boxes for too long. I think it's better for them. It better for them. I think it's also better for the new owner because you know they're getting used to the tent. So it's not like prop box. Prop box is very, very humid. Tent is slightly less humid, and then I can take them out from the tent as well. So this is one of them. And I do believe I will start to take photos. And I need to find a way to label them to number them because they do have quite a lot. By the way, I don't know if you have ever seen this. I, I'm always so shocked when I see people do this, when they write the name of the species on the leaf. It's so savage. <laughs> when they take a marker and they write on the back of the leaf and I'm like, what is up? What are you doing? Okay, so this one is one of the Finlaysoni that I have. And that one could actually have mealybugs on it. I don't think this one is quite ready because this one was propagating in water and it is 
I don't know, not so nice cutting. I put them in, in the ugly category. I will have an ugly category. I just don't like the spacing between the leaves, but it does have a peduncle, etc. There is nothing on this one, which does please me. Fosiana, one of the Fosianas already rooted. I think all of them, except for that base, you can see there. It started to root. So that is excellent. Uh, it makes me very happy. I see already new growth. Um, this is the smallest one. So I think I will sell the smallest one um, because it's quite a rare Hoya and, you know, I can offer it for cheap if it's slightly smaller. Okay, this is Golden Eye. I don't, I mean, you know, this happened in the tent. It didn't happen now. It, it's an, a cosmetic damage. I might leave these behind or offer them as like, you know, really discounted. And when I say that, like five euros, you know, six euros. Another Tangamus. Species Tangamos. Okay. I actually don't see the roots on this one, but I did take it out, so I must have probably judged. I probably was it like a slight tuck test. I do see the roots when I move the cocoa husk. So these are going to stay here for at least two more weeks. So there will be even more roots, but I just think I need to start taking the photos because Honestly, there's like 70 of them, and if I start taking photos later, I'll never do it. Another golden eye. All of them, I think, except a couple, have this damage. It's firm to the touch. I think it's a combination of light and watering. It happened a while back, and, you know, it is what it is. This is one of the Elegiorums, the red one. I do have a yellow one, but I didn't cut that yet. This one was like in a propagation back for such a long time. There's a lot of roots. <laughs> so not an issue with that one. Ugh. Another Finlay Sony Nova that has been water propagated. And I just put it in this cocoa husk. This one is nice. I don't think we. this is an ugly duckling. Like, so this one did actually have one mealy bug that I have seen, so. I will just make sure to inspect that. I think I caught them very early on. I removed it and I am going to wipe the leaves with some alcohol just to make sure I don't see anywhere else. Okay, we're immediately going to move that. We are carry. I do like this one. I might keep this one for myself. It's carry with splash which again, I don't know how well you can see that. And let me just inspect it. Okay, there is nothing on it. My issue here is I have to take them out from the tent. I do not want anything to spread in the tent. I do see one here as well. I don't know if you will be able to see her right there. So we're going to remove her. And I am not happy. Sneaky little bastard. This one is proving to be trickier to remove. It's really in there. I should get a cotton swab. It also did help that I did shower them and I knocked probably some of them off. So far, these two actually, I remember being in the same pro box, so they didn't move to the other ones. Luckily, mealybugs are somewhat slow. I mean, we're talking like a couple of days here, right? So they didn't really have time to move. I was quite lucky to notice it immediately. I mean, not immediately, obviously. Okay, this one doesn't have anything. This is what, Anucoides? And they weren't touching anything in my tent either, so I don't think this is actually going to spread, but you know, you never know. I definitely need to keep an eye out. See, found another one. So this Finley Sunny definitely had them. I can see there. And that one I do know is from the Pro Box. Actually, those Finley Sonys are not even for sale. They were supposed to be gifted, um, as well as this Passiflora. I'm just glad that the new ones, the new cuttings are not infected, right? That no one seems to be. Um, not quite sure exactly what I'm going to do now. I might need to, I might need to, I might need to put them on the bottom of my rotsta. Those that were in the problematic pro box, 
I'm going to actually keep them separate. And then the new ones that you did see me propagate that are from the tent, I know they don't have any so far, it seems. We do have two more boxes to go through, so I'm just going to grab those from the other tent. In this other box, I have mostly the ones that you have seen me chop. I do have one carry. Let me just inspect these. These should not have anything on them. What I did forget to say in this part of the video, I did treat all of these cuttings that I found mealybugs on. I treated them with systemic because that is the most effective thing that we have available. And I did separate them in completely separate prop box and they will stay there until I am 100% sure they don't have any mealybugs on them. The first carry wasn't effective. Look at that. What, you know? Are we wondering why I'm selling this one? This one is safe, I know that, because it was in a completely different box. And then the ones that we have seen me cut. Yeah, these are fine. I do have plenty of them that are still rooting, which I might actually check today. It was not like a big scare, but it was a small, unpleasant scare. And you know, it really shows you that you should be very careful because I did inspect that Bella when I got it, it was fine, but clearly over time, the mealybugs hatched. And I think they probably just hatched because they didn't make the rounds to most of the plants in the prop box. I think Finlay Sony was just right next to it. Very few got on there, but that doesn't mean, of course, that there aren't any eggs. So to make sure, I will spray them and separate them and monitor them. But it's also unpleasant because I didn't have any mealybugs. I, have, I did not see mealybugs in two years on any of my plants. It was amazing, but now it is over. <laughs> it is over. Okay, I'm feeling much better. I'm feeling much better. I was quite concerned. And this is the last one that we need to check. We do ha have to check another one, but I feel I will be judged if I show you those plants. It's the ugly ducklings. And some of them are actually really ugly. But I also know that people do sell the ugly ducklings um, for like very low. And most of the stuff that I deemed here as an ugly duckling is not even that ugly. Okay, this is one of one more of the Finlay Sonys. This one doesn't have anything. It, it's a very small cutting. And because it has such small leaves, I decided it's an ugly duckling, <laughs> which probably wasn't so fair. Like this Verticillata from Laos, it's an ugly duckling because it only has one leaf. It's kind of like a random, it's not, sorry, from Laos, from Loi province. It's like a random cutting. Same with this Latifolia from Lok River. Uh, Mural 135, one leaf. I don't know, I thought it was an ugly duckling, so I put it in the ugly duckling section. <laughs> Caudatas are very ugly. They have been exposed to too much light. This is Caudata big green leaf. I have two more that even look worse, but they're all growing. And probably by the time I put them up, they will have grown, so. I mean, this one is like really, really ugly. You know, I do see actually people from other countries sell these as like normal, <laughs> just, you know, sun-stressed plants. I could never, this one did start to grow as well. And this is like a larger cutting too, but I don't know, ugly duckling. I don't like it. Carnosa Brazil, Carnosa Brazil, I have two. These are reverted Carnosa Brazils marked them also as ugly ducklings because they have reverted. They are not the regular Carnosa. You can see the leaves are smaller, they're thicker. It's definitely not the regular green Carnosa. And I don't think they can revert back, but these are some lobby. I put them in ugly ducklings because lobby is always ugly, if you ask me. <laughs> I like it, but I like the flower. I don't like the leaves. And I don't know the color of the flower anymore, unfortunately. This one actually has particularly poor looking leaves, so I think it's fair to call it ugly. 
I did end my planned chores by taking photos of the Hoya cuttings that are ready for sale, but I will make sure that they are 100% clean. They're going to stay with me until the end of February at least, and then, you know, if they're completely healthy, then they will go. But I did find some mealybugs in my grow tent, unfortunately, on some of the larger Hoyas, so I'm currently treating one of the tents, and I might make a video on that. I'm actually using a DIY mix with paraffin oil and some soap. We can discuss that later. I also had Hoya occultata, as you know, in bloom, so I took some new photos that are a bit better. Hoya spartioides as well, and then Hoya benguentensis, which blooms all the time. And I actually tried to cross-pollinate some of the Hoyas with benguentensis, and then erythrina, which is not in these photos. So, you know, fingers crossed we get some seed pots, but this Hoya actually did have mealy bugs on them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon in the next one. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A big shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, and Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Batsy Bougie Panda, Brett Noble, Catherine Molina, Colleen Coyle Levi, Daniela Danub Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Deli Heridia, Diane Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Ethan W, Aaron Keenan, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Hoya Heather, Jamie Arsenault, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Jonas Barr, Hjorth Larsen, Jovan Denot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Koo, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kivi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Stef, Lisa Mary, MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Harmer, Selena Novosatsky, Maria West, Mars B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Neely Spicer, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ Plant Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martins, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green, Youth of the Valamut, Zordrama, and Zlokob Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons. Andy H, Angelina Farnan, Brenda Little, Kelon, Constance, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Syke, Zara, Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Riakul. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, one anonymous patron, Alice Borland, Brandon Pacheco, Christina Greengrass, Couture Helvetica, Emilia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chinmuller, and Tracy the Eyebiller.